The Democrat Party is a machine. Right now, I'm reading a wonderful biography of Chester Arthur, one of my favorite presidents. He's not the most well-known. He's mostly known for his mutton chops. But I'm, re- I'm reading about Chester Arthur. You know, in the 19th century, both political parties operated with machines. Patronage, they'd buy votes, they'd, they'd shake down the government workers to work for the party. And both parties did it. But the Democrats really perfected it. The most famous political boss in American history is Boss Tweed. The most famous machine in American political history is Tammany Hall. That was the Democrat machine. The machine is still operating. Okay, the machine, we like to flatter ourselves that all the bad stuff that people did in the past in politics, we've totally cleaned that up. That doesn't exist anymore. And now everything's operating above board. And that's our democracy, our sterling, stellar, pristine democracy is operating just as it should. But that's not the case. The Democrats are still, especially the Democrats, Republicans don't really have a very well-functioning machine right now, but the Democrats do, and that would be BLM, and it's a shakedown racket, and they shake down the big corporations, and they raise $90 million, and they pay off their cronies, and they pay off the stormtroopers on the street, and they pay off just about everybody, And and it all operates in a way that you have the entire society working in concert to advance a political message. The media, the news media, Hollywood, big tech, the universities, the the bureaucratic government, the elected government, they're all working together. The woke corporations, the way they're working together is because of a coordinated, very effective machine. The sort of thing you would have seen 150 years ago in American politics, you're still seeing it today. It makes me think in a slightly separate way, but go with me for a second, makes me think of the CIA. Makes me think of some of the intelligence agencies. We today, we all look back and we remember all the shady things that the intelligence agencies have done. They were invading foreign countries, toppling foreign governments, p- performing all sorts of experiments on American citizens. Oh my, MK Ultra! all these crazy experiments. Gosh, can you believe they did that in the past? I bet they don't do any of that anymore though, right? That's what people will say. Yeah, you know, all of these institutions, they did a lot of shady, dodgy things in the past, but they totally don't do any of that anymore. And it's all completely cleaned up and different now. He's like, uh, why? What would ever make you think that? <laughs> that these institutions that have been doing things for a very long time just suddenly overnight stopped doing all the bad things entirely? Uh, I don't buy that. And if we don't buy that with, I don't know, an intelligence agency or something like that, why would we buy it with a political party? The more things change, the more they stay the same. So the way a machine works is you got a carrot and you got a stick. The carrot is when you grease the wheels. The carrot is when you pay people off. The carrot is when you give people favors and patronage. The stick is when you punish people for for crossing your machine. And you're seeing that right now. The new Democrat stick is accusing any conservative, anyone who in any way calls out their plans of being a racist. The worst thing that you can possibly be called in America today is a racist. And so they wield this uh, very effectively and very loosely. Uh, one of the most important strategies for the Democrats is mass migration. They have relied on mass migration because statistically speaking, new immigrants and their kids and their grandkids are much more likely to vote for Democrats than Republicans. And Republicans are making huge inroads with Hispanic voters. That's true. And Republicans maybe in the future can make even more inroads. And Republicans have long told ourselves that Latinos are are Republican, they just don't know it yet. And we say all these sorts of things, but the numbers just don't bear it out, okay? Even with the massive shift from Hispanic voters to the Republican Party in recent years, it still gives a huge advantage to Democrats. And uh, if, you, if you say that now, if you say that Democrats are obviously using immigration policy to, to change the electorate, change the demographics of the country in a way that they think will give them an advantage, you're called a racist, awful conspiracy theorist. This is what Joy Reid just said the other day. They are, they are exploiting the shooting in Buffalo to attack Tucker Carlson in particular, because he's the m- most prominent conservative television host, but really all of us, everyone who has a conservative podcast, everyone who has a conservative radio show, everyone who's an elected conservative or, or, or just down there at the grassroots level, going to your local Republican meeting, you are being called a racist terrible, evil, awful person who's responsible for a shooting in Buffalo because you're calling out their strategy. No singular voice in right-wing media has done more to elevate this racist conspiracy theory than Tucker. 
who even with a new head writer spends night after primetime night injecting the rot from the dregs of the internet directly into the veins of Republican voters. Are Tucker's writers sourcing his show from 4chan? These are just questions. As the New York Times analysis last month found, in more than 400 episodes, Tuckums has amplified the idea that a cabal of elites want to force demographic change through immigration. That is replacement theory. Tucker's not some deep thinker. He's clearly just channeling the gross stuff his viewers could easily find online, then feeding it to Republican voters and Republican politicians as infotainment. And that feedback loop has terrifying reach. That murderous lowlife in Buffalo wouldn't even have to listen to Tucker. He wouldn't have to watch him at all to get it if they are essentially pulling from the same source material. It's terrible, disgusting, evil, false lies, propaganda, the lowest of the low kind of disinformation trash. This idea that elite people in our ruling class are using immigration policy to change the electorate so that they can get political. Who would ever suggest such a thing? It seems harder and harder to ignore that the echoes of replacement theory and other racially motivated views are increasingly coming out into the open. In a few years, we're going to be a majority brown country. White people will not be the majority in the country anymore. This will be the first generation ever in American history uh, in which whites will be a minority of the generation at some point. As of 2007, every year, babies being born in this country, whites now are the minority. In 2044? Uh, everyone is going to be a minority. As the demographics change, as white people become the minority in the country, which is coming. Demographics is destiny. Demographics is destiny. Demographics is destiny, right? The country is changing. I've been saying it here. Other people have been saying it here for years now, even before Donald Trump. The demographics is destiny. The white population is declining for the first time in history in America, while the number of multiracial Americans have more than doubled. So we live in a country where the demographics are changing. It's becoming less white. Uh, correct. Okay. You'll be announcing that we're calling the 38 electoral votes of Texas for the Democratic nominee for president. It's changing. It's going to become a purple state and then a blue state because of the demographics, because of the population growth. This goes on for like another minute. Okay. This goes on and on. And you see Julian Castro, he's saying, look, and it's going to totally give us the win. It's going to give us Texas, which was one of the reddest states, and it's because of people outside of Texas, by which we mean Mexico, by which we mean Latin America. And then Joe Scarborough, he says, demographics is destiny. Whoa, cool it with the racist great replacement theory there, Joe. All right. <laughs> I don't need a, this much racism in my morning. It's all the Democrats who have been spreading this, bragging about it for years. Those are just the people on TV. I could pull up countless articles from left-wing think tanks, from left-wing newspapers, not only observing this fact, but explaining how this fact is due to mass migration, which is a very specific policy from very specific lawmakers who are Democrats, for a very specific purpose. They're cheering it on because they think that it will give them an electoral advantage. And it's our fault because they told us what they were doing. They're doing a thing to put themselves in power, they think, permanently. Then they're telling us that they're doing that thing. And then when we repeat to them the thing that they just told us, they call us racist for repeating it. I am so glad that you liked that clip. Now, you got to smash that button and ring that like and jiggle that doodad and make sure that you get the notifications for the Michael Knowles show. Then you can head on over to wherever you get your audio podcasts for free. Not going to cost you a penny. Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, wherever, type in The Michael Knowles Show. You scroll, you find, you see my swarthy, sultry face. You click on it, you subscribe, you leave a five-star review, at least, I hope, and then we'll see you next time.